Okay, so this is how we create plant primary metabolites. Okay, is we're going to take carbohydrates. It's sunlight, carbon dioxide, a little water, add some minerals. We got all this energy. Okay, it comes through photosynthesis. Okay, our proteins. Okay, we get some mineral from the soil. We get our enzymes down here, our, some sugar, some biology. Now we're forming amino acids and proteins. Okay, this is the pathway on how all these things start to get changed our fats and our oils. Okay, our lipids. These come, these are from surplus energy. Once we have got carbohydrates and proteins, we go into fat and oil production. Vegetable, these are coming into vegetative tissue, reproductive tissue, omega-3s, omega-6s, omega-9s. Okay? So, are omega-3s good for you? Is the answer yes or is the answer yes? Yes. yes. Guys, we got her. Are omega-6s good for you? They are, aren't they? Can they be bad for you? Is the answer yes or yes? You're right, it is yes. If we get too many omega-6s in relation to our omega-3s, then we produce a toxin in our cells. Okay, because we only have enough enzymes to balance, to, to, to process about half and half. So, our omega-3s come from fish. Our omega-6s come from french fries. Deep fried cod, yeah, yeah, we're talking. Some really good stuff, okay? So I'm using more of my plant-based omega-6s, and in the American diet, we have 20 to 25 omega-6s to one omega-3. We should have, to one omega-3, we should have two omega-6s, but not more than three. So is there any wonder why we have heart disease and coronary issues and high blood pressure? Because our poor arteries are can't get stuff through them. Okay? So we got too many omega-6s in the system because of our diet. Okay? So we're making that out of phosphate. Okay? Now, facts about plant secondary metabolites. How many know about plant secondary metabolites? Next to hot sliced rolls with lots of butter. There's nothing better than plant secondary metabolites. Because this is where the intelligence of the plants really come into play. Okay? What do plant secondary metabolites do? Well, actually everything. Okay? This is where the plants make it or break it. Okay? Now, they're not very complicated. This is just the summary overview of plant secondary metabolites. Okay? We have plant secondary metabolites, then we have alkaloids, terpenes, phenolics, and sulfonated amino acids down here. Can you guys in the back see that okay? Leonard, how you doing? Good. Can you make that out? Okay, so when we get into here, are you okay down here? Okay, we're going to break it down a little bit better, all right? So when we look at this, there's four major groups. Alkaloids, terpenes, phenolics, and sulfonated amino acids. Now you guys do know what these are, okay? So, how many of you guys had any caffeine this morning? Aye, that's an alkaloid. How many of you guys had any cocaine this morning? That's an alkaloid. Nicotine is an alkaloid. Morphine is an alkaloid. Okay? Huh? Alcohol. Oh, that's just sugar. That's just metabolized sugar. Okay? But the plant does make those, okay? So the alkaloids are right here. Okay? And they make a lot of different plant compounds. Terpenes. How many of you guys have heard of essential oils? Okay? Those come out of your terpene groups. There's about 1,700 aromatic terpenes. Just 1,700, okay? Are these good, these essential oils? The women just... Oh, they love them. Love them. Do you know why? We're gonna, fi we're, we're gonna figure out why, okay? That's coming. Why do women use them? It, I mean, women got this, okay? <laughs> they got this. 
Phenolics, we're going to talk about them, sulfonated amino acids. They're kick butt. Okay, let's just go into our alkaloids. Caffeine, nicotine, Loxpur. Any you guys lost cattle from Loxpur? Respiration paralysis? Okay. Morphine, cocaine, all that good, good stuff. Essential oils, carotenes, okay? The yellow in your egg yolks, butterfat, lard. All comes from here. Okay, we're gonna take we're gonna start breaking these down. Your phenolics, your flavonoids, your non-flavonoids. Any of you guys ever take an aspirin? How many of you guys had to take an aspirin? Okay, now that's a synthetic version that will ruin your kidneys and ruin your livers. Okay? Plants make salicylic acid. They make their own natural aspirin, and you won't toast your internal organs taking this stuff. Because plants don't do that. Okay? Look at this stuff. Uh oh. My sulfonate amino acid, my cruciferous, anti cancer, liver detoxifier, antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral, anti cancer. Okay? We get into essential oils, okay? I have monoterpenes, sesquiterpenes, diterpenes, sesterterpenes, titerpenes, tetraterpenes, okay? I only have seven, a, a thousand of these, seven thousand of these, three thousand of these, a bunch of these other ones. In just the terpenoid group, there are 22,000 identified terpenoids so far. We haven't figured them all out, but we got up to 22,000 so far. Inside of each one of these guys, there are 300 to 800 different constituents. So you start doing the math. I take one group, I have between 8 and 16 million constituents in one group. I have four groups. Four groups. Okay? We have an intelligence in plants that is, we're not even tapping it. But to get to these compounds, we have to, when we look at essential oils, okay, which is just a section of the terpenes, okay? We have esters, aldehydes, ketones. What are these guys doing? Calming, relaxing, antifungal, antispasmatic, anti-infection, anti-inflammatory. Every one of your diseases will start with inflammatory. Every one of them. There's not one that doesn't start with an inflammatory response first. Okay? These guys, fever reducing, antiseptic, antimicrobial, cell regeneration, asthma, colds, flus, coughs, respiratory problems. The nutrients are made by these plants to address these health problems because our system needs nutrition to function. Our bodies are nutrition burning monsters. And if we grow plants without these compounds in them, we don't have the medicinal benefits from these plants. Most of your pharmaceuticals all came from biology or plants. Because you cannot patent nature, they make a synthetic version of it. And the difference is, when nature puts something together, there will be hundreds and thousands of buffering compounds in this intelligence, so there are no side effects. When pharmaceuticals do it, they take the active ingredient without the buffering compounds and you have endless side effects. I'll take one drug to cure my hangnail and I will get a bad leg, I will lose my, my digestive system, I'm 40% greater risk of stroke, of stroke. I will probably lose my eyesight. I will pick up Alzheimer's. I'll develop Parkinson's. I'll have gas. I'll lose my digestive system. But damn, I'm going to get that hangnail. And that's, when you read the side effect labels of your drugs, 
you're going to go in and physiologically force one gene to do something and you imbalance the rest of the system that it's connected to. And that's the thing pharmaceuticals can't do. They can't do what nature does. Because the plants have the intelligence to go in and put in all of the balancing compounds so that you get nutrition without the side effects. You get the medicinal process processes without the side effects. Okay? As we continue to look at this, our oxygenated compounds, alcohols, okay? We're getting back to you, Mike. Our alcohols, okay? Stimulate immunity. They're a diuretic, antibacterial, phenols, most powerful antibacterial, antifungal, antiseptic. Stimulates nervous system and your immune system, okay? Your oxides, antiseptic, anesthetic, strong booster of your respiratory system, okay? Our monoterpenes, A pinene, B pinene. What is this right here? Inhibits bone reabsorption. Anybody ever heard of osteoporosis? Okay, yeah. that's when you lose the mineral structure out of your bones. Well, goodness. One of these monoterpenes, these two guys right here, actually stop that process. All right? Caffeine right here, antibacterial, anti or this is your insect repellent, cholesterol reducer. What is the largest selling group of drugs in the world? Is it, is it statin drugs or statin drugs? There you go. We got it. Statin drugs. Reducing cholesterol. Okay? Well, right here, caffeine does that. Myrosine, cholesterol suppression, cancer prevention, limonene, cholesterol, anti-cancer. The list goes on and on. But when these guys do it, they do it in balance. Is cholesterol a bad thing? No. Okay, we have LDL and we have HDL. Okay, now, if they're in balance, they work together. But what we do is we eat too many omega-6s, we get too many LDLs, and we're out of balance. But, just so that we're clear, cholesterol is the basis of all of your hormones. Ah, we don't need those. Those just kind of get in the way. It is also the basis of all of your brain food. So if you really like the idea of Alzheimer's, I would suggest you load up on statin drugs because it will deplete your brain food like a drain in a tub. So what is your brain going to work off of if your primary substance for your brain is cholesterol based. Maybe that sugar. Not. 